So Microsoft Excel is fantastic at counting and actually helping us calculate probabilities. And there's some more advanced techniques in Excel that you can use. We're just gonna do some simple ideas here that I think are pretty interesting. You notice I already have a few cells filled out. For example, value, frequency, probability of a value. And then over here in kind of the J, I area, we're gonna have a table set up. And the first thing we wanna do is get some data. So the way we're gonna do that is in cell A2, I'm gonna come up to my formula bar and I'm gonna use the ran between function that will generate a random number between whatever I choose. I'm gonna pick one to 20. So now I get a random number between one and 20. And I wanna calculate, I want 25 of these. So I'm gonna go from A2 down to A26. And now I have 25 values randomly generated between 1 and 20. And that's a great way to create a data set to help us go over some probability exercises. Now I need to copy them and in the B column I'm going to right click and go to paste values. And that way every time I do a calculation you see in the column A they changed already. Every time I do a calculation the randomly generated numbers will randomly generate. Okay, now we said we had values 1 through 20, so in C2 I'm going to type 1, and in C2 I'm going to type 2, and if you see what I'm doing, I'm trying to fill out 1 through 20, and I can just drag this rectangle down, and Excel will figure that out for me, okay? And so far this is nothing new if you watch the Introduction to Excel video that I put together, but I'm just trying to review those concepts as well. Okay, now in the D column we want to calculate the frequency of each value, and the way I can do that is by a function called count if. So I'm going to say count equals count if and I need to put in a range and then a criteria. And so the range is going to be my data set which is the B2 to B26 and I want those fixed so I'm going to put dollar signs around them. That way if I drag this formula down that, that range will stay B2 to B26 which is exactly what I want. Now the criteria is, I want what I'm doing here with count if is I'm searching through this column and I'm counting the, all the times the value 1 shows up. So instead of typing the value 1, I'm just going to say C2. Notice the red rectangle. And there I had three instances of the value 1 in my B column. Now yours may be different because remember this B column was generated randomly. So no one should have the same data set. And now, since I designed this formula well with the dollar signs around the B2 and the B26, and I have C2 there, if I drag it down, look at that, I fill out all the frequencies. So we had zero twos, we had zero threes, we had one four, et cetera, going all the way down to 20. Now the total here that I wanna calculate at D22, I could do it in a couple ways. One is I could just count the number of values from B2 to B26, and I could do that using the count function. So I'm going to say count B2, comma B26, and I should get 25. There we go. Um, another way I could do this is by using the sum function. I could add up all my frequencies, right? Because every number is counted once in the frequency. So if I say the sum of D2 down to D21, I should get 25 as well. All right, so you can do it either way doesn't really matter, just whatever you feel more comfortable with. Okay, now in the E column, we want to calculate the probability of each value. In other words, if I just picked a number out of column B randomly, what's the probability it's going to be 1? If you remember, probability is calculated by counting the number of times an element shows up in my set divided by the total number of things in the set. Okay, um, so here, for example, since 1 showed up three times, the probability of drawing a one is three out of 25. Now I want to do that in a systematic way. So what I'm going to say here is like this. I'm going to say D2, because that's the number of times it showed up in the set, right? That's the frequency, divided by the total number of things I have, which is down here at D22. And I want that to stay fixed for all my values. So I'm going to say dollar sign D22, right? So now I'm saying three divided by 25 which is 0.12. Now I can calculate my other probabilities since we designed our formula in the formula bar this way by simply dragging down the rectangle. And there we have it. There are all my probabilities. Of so what's the probability of drawing a 16? Well, it's a 
0.04, a 4% chance of drawing a 16 randomly out of my B column. And I hope that makes sense. Okay, now turning the page to learning some counting techniques, permutations and combinations, if you remember, are very important in counting the number of ways we can do something. And for example, if I wanted to calculate how many ways could I draw four items out of 10, but this is with a permutation, so the order in which I draw them matters. So if I draw one, two, three, four, that's different than one, three, two, four. So how would I do that? Okay, in Excel, it's pretty easy. In, in mathematics, we have some formulas that help us do this, but in Excel, we just need a function, which is the permute function. And so I'm gonna say permute, comma, I'm selecting 10, I mean out of 10 things, I'm selecting four. All right, so this is the permutation, the number of ways I can pick four items out of 10 where the order does matter. And there it is, 5,040. Combination is the same idea, but this time with a combination, the order doesn't matter. So one, two, three, four, and one, three, two, four, that's the same thing. You're all, you're all going to lunch together, it doesn't matter what order you got selected in. And so here I'm gonna say uh, equals, the function in Excel is combin, like combination. So we say combin 10, four, and this should be less than permutations. There it is, there's 210 ways to draw four items out of 10 randomly, where you don't really care what order you're selected in as long as you just got a seat to the table, right? That's the difference between permutation and combination. Okay, now this last section, we're gonna need a table and I've filled in these values here for us. All right, so here, if you look at this, we call this a contingency table. Um, for example, in the cell K3, I see that I have 290 female sophomores, right? So that's the intersection between female and sophomores. All right, now in the N column, I want to calculate the total. So the total number of males, I could do this simply as a sum going from J2 over to M2. And so I had 1,124 males. And I can just drag that down to get the total number of females. And actually, let's drag it down one more. We should get a zero there for N4. But notice we had 1,131 females. Okay. Now, what about freshmen? How many freshmen did I have? Well, I can just do a sum there. Let's just sum down the column. Let's go from J2 to J3. And so if you notice, now I'm adding up the total number of freshmen. And I had 660. And if I just drag this across, I'm filling in the total number of sophomores, juniors, and seniors, respectively. And now this N4 cell is calculating the total number of students, right? It's adding up the total number of freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors. Okay, so from there, we were going to answer some probability questions. And so in cell I6, I'm going to type, I want to know the probability of randomly selecting a student who is a freshman. Okay, now remember, the probability of a freshman would be the total number of freshmen divided by the total number of students. So here, I can just look and see, well, that's going to be J4, which is the total number of freshmen, divided by N4, the total number of students, and there I have it. There's my probability. Now let us ask the question, what's the probability of drawing a female student just randomly? All right, so now I just need to figure out where are my, where's my total number of females over here in the N column. That's going to be N3 divided by N4. There's a probability of drawing a female student, which is close to 50%, which is about what we expect. Let's make some trickier examples here. So now let's look at the probability of sophomore and male. So that means this person's going to, when I select this person, it's got to be a male and a sophomore. Well, if I notice in cell K2, that is the male sophomores. That's exactly right. So here in cell J8, I'm going to say equals K2 divided by N4. Right, That's the total number of male sophomores divided by the total number of students. And there I have my probability around 12.6%. And now let's look at some conditional probability. So if I said, if I said this, the probability of a junior given female, what does that mean? That means I already knew something about this person. I knew that they're a female, okay? So if I know they're female, now what's the probability that they're a junior? And so the way I need to think about that is I need to divide by not the total number of juniors. I mean, 
I need to count not the total number of juniors, just the female juniors. Okay, so that's going to be equals L3 divided by not the total number of students, right? Because I know something already about this person. I know it's a female. So I could say L3 divided by the total number of females. And that will give me the probability of selecting a junior knowing that I'm already having a female. And, and I hope that makes sense. What you're doing, imagine you had all the students in a gym and you ask all the males to leave and now you're randomly drawing a student. And so that's what the, the conditional probability given that they're a female means. And there's that probability. And let's flip it around now in cell I-10. Let's do female given junior. Okay, so what do we know about this person already? We know that they're a junior. And so what I could say here is we let all the freshmen, sophomores, and seniors leave the room. And now we just want to know from the junior class, what's the probability of drawing a female? And so I can say, well, that's going to be equals L3, because that's the females out of the junior class, divided by the total number of juniors, which is L4. And so there's the probability of drawing a female, given that you're, you already knew the person was a junior. All right, let's do another one. Let's look at the probability of senior or male. Okay, so this time we want to know we've selected a student and if either they're a senior or a male. And how do we do this? So we need to calculate the number of all males. So that's going to be N2 plus the number of all seniors, which is M4. But now notice here when I did that, the cell M2 was counted twice, right? That group, the senior males, was counted along all the males and along all the seniors. So that 276 was actually counted twice. So what I need to do is subtract out 1M2 so that I only count it once. And now I'm going to divide all that by the total number of students, which is N4. And there's a probability of selecting either a senior or a male. Again, look at the formula bar. The N2 is calculating the total number of males. The M4 is calculating the total number of seniors. But the 276 were counted in both groups, so they were counted twice. So we subtracted out once to make sure that we only counted them one time. And then divided by N4, the total number of students. All right, good. So we answered some probability questions. I hope this makes sense. I hope you see that Excel is a very useful tool. If you have any questions on it, I'd be glad to help. Let me know, and thanks for watching.